Content warning. The Matherson marriage contains unhealthy relationship dynamics and fictional domestic abuse. If you are in a real-life Matherson marriage, please reach out to the appropriate authorities for help. Resources you may find helpful include the Pixel Project's Domestic Violence Resource page and UN Women's International Helplines list. Resources will be linked in the video description for accessibility. Content warning for this particular chapter, there are references to physically abusing a child as well as period typical sexism and unhealthy relationship dynamics. Listen at your own risk. Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I will be reading from The Matherson Marriage by Ruby M. Ayers. Chapter 8. Pansy gave a long sigh of relief. Thank goodness. She went back to her seat at the table. Where is it, Buster? Give it to me. Run and fetch it. Buster shook his head. He seemed to have had he seemed to have no idea that he had done anything wrong. Yeah, he said confidently. I threw it in the pond. Threw it in the pond. There was a tragic silence broken by Lynn Ramston's quiet voice. We can soon fish it up again, Mrs. Matherson. We'll have a diving expedition after lunch. Matherson looked at his wife. This is thanks to you and the way you spoil the boy, he said angrily. He's never been disciplined, and this is the result the boy's a thief. Basil, how dare you say such a thing, Pansy flashed out, and then she tried to control herself. That's absurd, she said shakily. He didn't know he was doing harm, and anyway, as Mr. Ramston says, we can soon get it again. From a pond that has two feet of slime and weeds at the bottom, Matherson sneered. He pushed back his chair. What are you going to do? Pansy asked anxiously. I'm going to teach the boy a lesson for once in his life, Matherson answered grimly. Basil, Pansy started up, knocking her chair over. He didn't know he was doing wrong. I'm sure he didn't mean to be naughty, did you, darling? Tell father you're sorry. Tell him why you threw Dodie's brooch in the pond. To see if he could, to see if he would swim said Buster, with a little tremor in his voice. Joyce put a protecting arm round, her chi round the child's shoulders. I'll punish him. I'll punish him if you wish him to be punished, Basil, she said. Please leave it to me. I'll punish him myself, Matherson answered. It's time someone showed him who was master. They had all forgotten Lynn, Lynn Ramsden. Pansy flew round the table and stood between her husband and son. What are you going to do? I won't have him punished. You're not in a mood to be just, Basil. Matherson pushed her away with an ungentle hand, and with the other lifted Buster from his chair. Basil, I beg of you, Pansy implored. Ramston rose to his feet. Let the little, let the little chap off this once, Matherson, he urged. He tried to speak lightly, but his face was white with suppressed anger. Matherson strode to the door with Buster under his, under his arm. The sooner he begins to learn obedience, the better, he said. Dodie! Dodie! Buster turned terrified eyes to his mother. Pansy broke into passionate sobbing. She was nervous and overwrought, and this was the last straw. You brute! You brute! If you touch him, I'll never forgive you. Matherson looked back at her over her shoulder. You've only yourself to think, he answered, and he went out, slamming the door behind him. Pansy rushed forward. In her haste, she tripped over a loose edge of the rug and nearly fell. She cried out sobbingly to Joyce. Don't let him hurt him! Don't! Don't let him! Pansy! Ramsden tried to stop her, but she evaded him and wrenched open the door. She flew up the stairs to her husband's room. She could hear Buster crying and screaming, Don't! Don't! She tried the handle frantically, but the door was locked, and she beat on it with clenched fists. Let me in! Let me in! Basil, I beg of you, please, please! But it seemed an eternity before the key was turned in the lock, and the door flung wide. Matherson came out. He looked at Pansy contemptuously. I wonder you're not ashamed to make such a fool of yourself, he said. She hardly heard. She brushed past him and fell on her knees beside Buster. Darling, my beautiful darling. She gathered him into her arms, and he clung tightly round her neck. Toadie, Toadie. Matherson heard them so both sobbing as he went downstairs. He walked into the dining room and sat down on the table. I fancy I've taught him a lesson, he said complacently. Pansy ruins the boy. Ramston made no reply, and, struck by his silence, Matherson said with a trace of uneasiness, I was right to punish him, don't you think? My dear fellow, don't ask my advice, Lynn said with an effort, but his face twitched with passionate anger, and he kept his eyes lowered. I gave him six cuts with a cane, Matherson said again. He won't forget it in a hurry, I fancy. Joyce rose. If you will excuse me, I will go to Mrs. Matherson, she said. Matherson looked after her and shrugged his shoulders. 
women make such fools of themselves if a child cries, he said irritably. If you've finished, we'll go down to the garage and tell Gates to drag, to drag the pond and see if he can find that brooch. He laughed. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think we shall get it easily. I had the slime and weeds cleared out while Pansy was away, but I wasn't going to tell her. Perhaps this will teach her a lesson. She's careless, she's careless and is personified. Ramston pushed back his chair. I, I think I ought to be getting home, if you'll excuse me. He said, there's a man coming to see this afternoon about some improvements to the house, and I must be there. He would not be persuaded to stay, and Matherson saw him off and went in angry search of Pansy. This is all your fault, he told her furiously. There was no man coming to see him. I'll stake my life. It was just a trumped-up excuse. No wonder he wanted to get away. There's always a scene when he's in the house. And you make it, Pansy answered. She was quite white, but her eyes blazed. I don't know what's happened to you lately, she went on hoarsely, but I think you must be mad. I'm sure you are. If you think I'm going to submit to being treated like this, I've played the game with you, Basil, but if you ever dare touch Buster again as you did this afternoon, I'll leave this house and take him with me, and I'll never come back. Matherson began to bluster. That's right. Exaggerate things as usual. I only gave him a few cuts with a cane. I hardly touched him. hardly touched him. Have you seen his hands? His poor little hands? She broke into bitter sobbing. Oh, go away! Go away! I can't bear to look at you! She would not go down to dinner that night. She sat with Buster after he was in bed, reading a fairy story to him, and when Joyce came to tell her that dinner was ready, she shook her, she shook her head. I'm not going down. You go, Joyce. But, my dear, what will the servants think? Pansy laughed. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got past caring what they think, she said. But you go down. There's a dear end. Joyce? Well? You don't think I was wrong in the... You don't think I was in the wrong at lunch, do you? Buster didn't really deserve to be punished and frightened like that, surely. Joyce looked away. I... I think the whole thing was brutal, she said vehemently. Especially in front of Mr. Ramsden. Pansy's white face flushed. Do you think it was because of me that he went away? She asked painfully. Basil says it was. He says that Mr. Ramsden was disgusted. So he was. But with him, Joyce answered. I thought Mr. Ramsden looked as if he could have mur I thought Mr. Ramsden looked as if, as if he could have murdered him. Pansy drew a quick breath. As long as he isn't disgusted with me, she said. Joyce walked out of the room without answering. Pansy did not see her husband again that night, and he was up and out of the house the following morning before she came down. I think he's going over to Chiswell's, ma'am, one of the maids said when Pansy questioned her. I heard him say something about it to Gates. But in less than an hour, Matherson was back. He strode into the hall and shouted for Pansy. A fine fool you've made of yourself and me, he raved when he found her. Ramsden's gone off to town and left no address, and they don't know when he'll be back. His eyes accused her furiously. This is what you've done, and now heaven only knows what will happen. He banged the table with his fist. Didn't I, didn't I tr tell you to be civil to him and try and make a friend of him? Didn't I tell you that I had important business with him and meant everything to me, keeping on good terms with him, and now you've dished the whole thing? Pansy looked at him with cold eyes. You've only yourself to thank for anything that has happened, she answered. And as for your business, Mr. Ramston told me that the only business between you was that you were arranging to buy some shares for him. That's only his excuse, Matherson answered savagely. It's not likely he was going to discuss my affairs with you. Women can't be trusted, and he realizes it as well as I do. Pansy stood up. What was the business between you then? she asked. He stormed the length of the room and came back. It's enough for you to know that it means ruin to me if it doesn't come off he said savagely, and ruined to you too, and the boy. Oh, you wouldn't understand if I told you the details, but those are the main facts, so you'd better find some way of bringing Ramston back as soon as possible. Pansy's face flamed. I... bring him back? You must be mad. What can I do to bring him back? Her heart was beating to suffocation. For the moment she thought that Basil must have discovered the truth and was holding his knowledge over her head, but he answered at once. What can you do? I apologize, of course. Write him a letter. Say you are sorry you made such a scene in front of him. I'd rather die. Matherson stared for a moment. Then he laughed. <laughs> oh, very well. Please yourself. 
but I tell you this. I've had enough of your airs and graces, my dear, and you'll write and apologize to Ramston before the end of the week, or I find a school for Buster and pack him off at once. Do you hear? You can choose. You must be mad, Tansy said again hoarsely. Matherson laughed. <laughs> That remains to be proved. I'll give you till the end of the week. You can't send Buster away unless I consent, she cried. Can't I? You'll see what I can do. I've spoiled you both shockingly, and it's time to stop it. She looked at him with tragic eyes. I wonder if you've quite forgotten that you used to love me, she said in a hard voice. Matherson winced, and his eyes fell, but he turned on his heel. He won't disarm me talking like that, he said. I mean what I say. Either you write and apologize to Ramsden, or Buster goes to boarding school. You can please yourself. And he went out, leaving her standing there, white-faced and tragic. And that is the end of Chapter 8 of The Matherson Marriage by Ruby Ayers. Thank you for listening to this chapter with me, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye!